There is some evidence indicating that children with no siblings develop language faster than twins. To test this, a researcher provides a language development assessment to a group of twins and to a group of children with no siblings. Okay, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to find out, um, you know, compared to, to single children, do twins acquire language basically slower, right? Or do single children um, acquire a language faster? So we're really looking for a negative number here because we're comparing the twins against these single or only children. In the last couple of examples, we did 0 0.05, so let's go alpha 0 0.01 for this one. And it's going to be a one-tailed test, right, because um, with this one, we're, we're just trying to find this critical region, right? Do the twins um, develop language at a statistically significantly lower rate than um, children, in, like only children, children that are only only child in that household? So we have six participants in our study, right? So the first thing we need to do is we need to find out the difference scores between them. So we take eight for the single child and six for the twin, and we're going to say they have an average or a, um, a drop of two. And we're going to say these are for like three-year-olds. So think like toddlers. And this language acquisition test is trying to find out how many words they know or how many words they can recognize. And so for the second child, we match them with um, the first child had seven, but the twin had a four. Again, with match sample, we're matching at at least one variable, this case, um, how old they are, <clears throat> and then looking at the difference between, well, um, another variable, so single child versus a twin. Okay, um, and then 10 to 6 would be a drop of 4, 6 to 7 um, actually was an increase of 1, then 9 to 4 was a drop of 5, and then 8 to 9 again was that increase of 1. Again, we are um, interested or concerned about individual raw scores, but the bigger thing we're looking at with all related sample t-testing, and that's with match sample or repeated um, sample t-testing, is the difference. So the first thing we need to do is find the sum of the difference. And we're just going to add up. We're going to add up negative 2 and negative 3 and negative 4, positive 1 and negative 5, and positive 1. And that's going to give us a sum of difference of negative 14. Negative 14. Okay, now we're going to square each one of these raw difference scores. And again, every time you square a negative number, it becomes positive. So we just kind of follow that. So then we add up the um, sum of the difference scores squared. And so we're going to add up 4 and 9 and 16 and 1 and 25 and 1, and we get 56. Okay. Now let's find our mean difference. And again, the mean difference equation is the sum of the differences divided by the sample size. Okay, or negative 14 divided by 6. And that gives me negative 2.33. Then I go and I say, um, okay, so I know my, my, um, my mean negative 2.33. Oh, my degrees of freedom are 5. Let's find our um, critical value of t real quick, too. So go um, alpha 0 0.01, one tail, um, with 5 degrees of freedom. And that's going to give me a t crit, you know, this number to beat, of negative 3.365. So again, I'm looking for this very right here, critical region. Okay. Um, I can find sum of squares now. Yeah, okay. So sum of squares for the difference is the sum of d squared minus sum of d squared divided by n. Okay. And I know my sum of d squared is 56 divided, or minus this 14 squared divided by um, 6. Right. Or um, 56 minus 196 divided by 6, or my sum of squares difference is 23.3. Okay, 23.33. Okay, now I can find variance, and variance is um, my sum of squares at 23.33 divided by my degrees of freedom, and 
this case would be 5, so my variance is um, 4.67. And to find um, standard deviation, I just take the square root of my variance, or the square root of 4.67, and I get variance of 2.16. Okay. Now I can find this estimated standard error of the mean difference, which is the square root of my variance divided by my sample size. So square root of 4.67 divided by 6 is um, square root of 0.778, or my estimated standard error of the mean difference is 0.88. Now I have everything I need for my t obtained formula. Again, t obtained is mean difference divided by the estimated standard error of the mean difference. My mean difference is the one up here, 2.33. And my estimated standard error of the mean difference is here, 0.88. So I get a t obtained of negative 2.64, which is compared to my negative 3.365 I needed, not enough. So I fail to reject my null hypothesis as my um, t obtained was not greater than my t, um, my critical value of t. It was um, slower, right? They, they developed language slower, but not as slow as the um, as to be statistically significantly slower. So my AP statement then would be t with a sample size of 6 gave me a test statistic of two point, negative 2.64 with a p-value being greater than 0 0.05 or this I failed to reject that null hypothesis. And um, but what's interesting with this one though, with this um, problem, is if I would have had that alpha level be at 0 0.05 instead of 0 0.01, I probably would have been able to reject that null hypothesis. So, uh, you know, it's hard being a researcher because, or being a statistician, because if you set that alpha level too loose, you increase that probability of committing a type 1 error. But here, we um, set the, the alpha level, the confidence interval, too low, too stringent, right, 0 0.01, um, and, and we might be missing a, an actual thing. We might, we might be missing maybe um, single children do acquire language at a statistically significant faster rate than twins do. But we just set that alpha too, too strict.